You're not sure I know that one. One thing about it, these guys sure don't get as excited as, uh, and move half as quick as we used to do when we're doing it. We should come to Canada and take some lessons. Thank you. 
vehicle go, then it's important to do that for me. And you'll, you'll notice now that these other couple are coming in. Mulder and Ricky here have got uh, a different set of harness on that. Because they're the pole horses, the bridging goes around their high water is actually my reverse vehicle. So if I want the vehicle to go backwards, I bring these two big fellas back and I'll push the vehicle back. Or if I'm going down the hill and I want to hold the vehicle off the other horses, these are the two will hold that. So they've got to be very experienced and strong horses. The two that guys have just bought here on the near side is another young fella, a four year old, Barney. Barney was bred in Victoria. And next to Barney is uh, Doc. Doc comes from Moree. We get our horses all over Australia. Um, this team, we've got a Queenslander, Victorians, and uh, New South Welshman in this team. And we choose our horses number one on quality, colour, and temperament. I've got a bit of a ribbon from the breeders down here. These gentlemen standing down on my right hand side are probably uh, a group of the top fly style breeders in this country. And that's something we're very proud of here in Australia is the quality of horse. Our horses can compare with any horses in the world for quality. And it's improving all the time. Um, these gentlemen take the band all the expense and the time and the trouble of import top uh, standards to the country with our top quality mares. We're now producing some of the best horses in the world today. And the colour to us is important because it's tradition. And that's the thing that we're trying to maintain in everything that we do. Even today, we still do vehicle differences as it was done 100 years ago. Uh, the only difference being we're probably, uh, our gears a bit shinier and our horses uh, uh, probably fed a little bit more than the horses in the old days. in Australia and I believe the Southern Hemisphere. It's very rare to see a team of this size anywhere. Um, we only put it together for this show. Uh, Hal, one of the major sponsors of the Royal Easter show. So we go to the trouble of uh, producing this team Easter. And it's truly a rare sight. This team was made here in Sydney by uh, Chris Smith, who's like that at the family, he's our famous mate now. Um, we're always upgrading our, our gear because uh, it gets knocked around with wear and tear. But we try and maintain that tradition. It's the same as the vehicle that uh, I'm sitting on top of. Uh, it's actually a brand new vehicle, it was built in 1988. It was built from the, the ground up, it was quite an old vehicle restored. Now other vehicles that you'll see here in the pavilion uh, are certainly older vehicles, but uh, still maintained in, in show condition. This vehicle is probably a testament to the crux that we have in the shop hole here between Boulder and Reef. Um, that was 10 foot thick, long, and reach wood. That's 12 months ago. See if you have that hole um, ready for uh, for a vehicle of this height. Each head of harness takes something like two weeks to, to make a handcrafted harness. Right back to some high hands. 
see that the turrets are all a bit different, it keeps the range separated. It's very important that uh, my range is free all the time. When driving a team, you're actually driving pairs, and in this case I'm driving four separate pairs. So you've got the, the horse's position at different angles and such, and that's done through voice and the range. And you really need to make sure that you've got a nice free run for your range. Nothing worse than getting a range hooked up, stuck or locked off or something. It's like driving a motor car and someone grabbing the wheel when you're trying to turn a corner. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you can, uh, you can get a little idea of just seeing what's happening here and how much time it goes into getting the team on the arena. There's hours of work just to get a team like this prepared and after the hour performance, uh, you've got a few hours after that also to um, strip everything down. And that's not uh, taking into account the horse that has to be fed, it's out, all that sort of thing. Okay. 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 Uh, Alex, and actually uh, father and daughter, and that was only by accident, it wasn't something we set out to do or anything. I think our TV commercial, and they're seeing the horse running along the beach and through. Right in the middle, 
is the teamster, and that is Terry Goodyear. Each hand, one piece goes to the first horse, the other rein goes to the next, the third, and then finally right up to the lead horse. So the uh, length from Terry's hand to the mount of the lead horses is some 57 feet, which is a long, long way. So Terry has a lot of leather on his hands. Now I mentioned there are eight horses, but Terry doesn't actually drive eight horses, Mary Lou. He drives four pairs. So he drives the lead pair as one unit, he drives the next pair as another unit, the next pair as another unit, and then he has the wheel in under his feet, which he also drives as a unit. It must take a long time to get those horses trained to work as units like that. Well, it certainly does, although well, they do rotate around the team occasionally. But now Terry Goodyear controls the team by either using the reins or by voice control. Now we do have Terry mic'd up, and in a moment or two when he starts to do some of the uh, driving manoeuvres, we will actually uh, bring the volume up so that you can hear Terry talking to the horses. So as you can appreciate, those big horses weigh somewhere between 750 and 800 kilograms. So Terry has eight of them, so if we multiply that by eight, there's uh, something like uh, seven and a half ton in front of him. Now, he is not strong enough, not even Terry Good yet, if those horses decide they were going to take off, that he could pull them up. If you put the brake on, well, they would just drag the lorry the wheels not turning. So Terry has to have uh, these horses uh, beautifully trained, and of course, uh, be, have a great deal of confidence in the training of these horses. So the two horses out in front are pretty important, and they have to be reasonably bold, because they are the ones that sort of break the ice if necessary. The uh, next two pair don't do a lot other than do a lot of pulling. The team in underneath Terry's feet are very important because they do all the steering of the wagon, they are the brakes of the wagon, and they are the means by which Terry pushes them back. Now at the moment Terry will steer the lead pair first, he'll turn them, then he turns the next pair, then the next pair, and finally the pair under his feet. And if you notice closely, you'll realise that the length from the tip of the lead horses to the back of the wagon was greater than the space between the drums. So Terry really had to do some good driving. So up alongside Terry is a Peter Devish, and then uh, up there as well, giving lots and lots of advice, is uh, Vic. And Vic is the Dalmatian, and is the mascot of the Carlo United Brewery team. And Dalmatian has a great affinity with horses, and back in the early days, when coaches were uh, on the road, they would run either in underneath the coaches or throw the streets and made a nuisance of themselves. And then upset the horses? Yes, very much so. They would come racing out and snap the horses' heels and sort of upset the feet. So the Dalmatian used to race out and sort of chase these two dogs away. I must say, Vic looks like a very happy Dalmatian. Oh, yes. Well, it's a mascot of the company I grew to. It's a pretty luxurious bike, you know. Yeah. So he drives the team through between the first two drums and turns the team before going through the next two. Let's see if we can pick Terry up. Now the age of the team varies from the youngest one in the team at the moment is around about a four year old and the oldest is around about 19. So horses are like anybody else, if they are looked after properly and they are nice and healthy and they're fit, they can keep working for quite some years. Not unusual to have horses in the 2025 20, age bracket. You were telling me before, Brian, about the, um, the cool bloods, the warm bloods, the hot bloods. What would these horses do? Well, these, are, these horses are cold blood, cold and it's nothing to do with the temperature of blood in the body, it's to do with the temperament of the horse. So the Clydesdale, while they are huge in proportion, are very, very gentle, and they have a wonderful temperament. So they are the cold blood. The other end of the scale, we have the, uh, the thoroughbreds, probably the Arabs, who are hot-blooded, and, uh, you know, they get pretty excited about anything that happens. In between, there is a group of horses that we call the warm blood, and it's basically a mixing of the uh, thoroughbred and the heavier horses. And they are horses being uh, very successfully bred for Olympic competition. Red bars, three days. So the wagon that you see has been uh, commissioned by Carlton United Breweries. It is not brand new, but it was made uh, new, it's not restored. The harness also was uh, built uh, brand new. Carlton and United Breweries had faith the tradesmen of Australia to uh, build a lorry. Also, the, uh, the kids on the back aren't you, but I've got bad news for Why not? 
Okay, let's bring it up so we hear Terry now drive the team once more. Now you'll notice that Terry gets a lot of encouragement to the back and a little bit extra hard. You can see that going around their hind quarters. Okay, that's the Richard, and that is the is the uh, device that is used to slow the vehicle down or to push the vehicle. So when the horse starts to walk backwards, he pushes his hind quarters into that strap, around behind his uh, hind legs, under his tail, and that in turn uh, attacks the lorry and pushes the lorry back. So there's only two that can do any braking, there's only two that can do any reversing. So now we're going to see if Terry can drive the team with a lot of accuracy. See if he can hit centimetres each side of the lorry when he goes through the gate. Let's bring him up again so we can hear this.
straight jacket. The straight jacket escape is difficult enough on dry land, let alone underwater. Apology by Mr. James Lamont. I think, no, I don't think it'll peel. I think it's just dry. Where's your mate all? It's in the hole in the, in the room. I guess we should be tearing around here. That's right. We're paying money for it. The Matterhorn over there. I got a picture of a guy. There was a. This guy is just coated in silver paint. He's acting like a robot. Oh yeah. He's down. Yeah, we on stilts. Right down by that. Not the one train. Oh. No, he wasn't on stilts. Oh, we oh, saw the. Oh, there's another horse ring down there, eh? Oh, oh yeah. 